Welcome to episode four of Comedians at Skate Parks. I'm Taylor Clark, and we're in Queens, Astoria, baby, under a bridge with my good friend, Sean Donnelly, one of the first comedians I ever talked to about skateboarding, one of the jolliest, wisest comedians I know, and I'm so excited to finally get to go hang out at the skate park with him. This is so shocking for me to even go. (laughs) Been a while since he skated, but he's a skater. And he's hilarious, and I love him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I am so old. John. And he's so funny. Big round of applause. He's been on Letterman, Comedy Central, you name it. Give it up for Sean Donnelly. Understand, my biggest fear right now is being called a poser by you on stage. That would be so insane if I got away with not being called that for fucking 43 years. It's my birthday too, so go fuck you. It's my birthday. Oh my god. Yeah. 43 today. Happy birthday, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> Even just skating around is fun. You know what I'm saying? Just old and skating. Look at him go. Here we go, manual. Yeah. <laughs> I just put that great part right there. Yes! <laughs> the old man did it. You know what's funny? I, I think I look way smoother when I'm actually doing it. Then I'm like watching myself skate and I'm like, Oh no, I look like a 43-year-old man I'm running a skateboard. <laughs> you also like forget about like skate park etiquette, where like I'm in everybody's way all the time. Okay. When did you start skating? 15? I went from like 15 to like 21. Well, I was, okay, so when I started it was 92, and then 92 was the big year for the questionable video. Yeah, well, yeah. So you came sense. up in like the, like, well, like the Motown era of skate videos. <laughs> yeah. you go, okay, so yeah. you are West Coast. We're Long Island, we're East Coast. It took about a year for everything to get from you guys to us. Right. So we were still wearing big pants and then virtual reality came out yeah. and everybody had small pants on. <laughs> we're like, oh fuck, they're, they're smaller pants. And that, yeah. now we have to wear, start wearing those pants. Yeah, yeah. So questionable video was the big video that came out right when I started, pretty much. Yeah. So that's one of my favorites, just because it's like nostalgic at this point. And what was his name? Did all the handrails in the beginning. Pat Duffy. Pat, Pat Duffy, Pat Duffy. Yeah, Pat yeah. Duffy. yeah, 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 yeah. Back lip in the rain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so Riders in the Storm plan. But Mouse is one of my favorite videos. Yeah. They use it questionable and Mouse is like a man after my own heart. No, that's, I don't, I'm, I'm literally saying I'm an awful skateboarder. That's why I have such a love for it because I sucked. Don't get me wrong, like I do basic, basic stuff, uh-huh. like I said. But some guys just do it for the social part. That was me. Like, like the social part of it was yeah. the thing. Even stand up. Like there's guys that you know that do comedy for 15 fucking years and they're not that great at it, but they just do it for the social part of it. Versus like skateboarding, <laughs> you have a shelf life. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, a shelf life. Yeah. But you don't though, because you're what? You're in your 30s and you fucking, yeah. you're ripping it but up. That's the like, thing, my, my stable of tricks that yeah. I can still do. That's, and you get to be around it. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, right. it's, it's a matter of being around it. You know, yeah, like, exactly. You know? Your friends were from all over because it was through skateboarding, right? I hung out with all the older kids at the skate yeah, park. Yeah. They taught me to find a crew of friends that make it less, more tolerable. That's a win. Those are when all wins. When you get your group, the group that you that you chill with, that actually, especially if it's a good group of people that is like has the same mindset as you, that's gonna but like keep you honest, basically, and keep and get make you better, like funny guys that you hang out with. Yeah. That helps big time. But not to, big, I don't know, I'm not yep. trying to rally us together. I'm just trying to make a statement, and I. But it's true because I, the funniest fucking people, I've been in comedy 15 years and the funniest people I met was through fucking skateboarding. And mostly because of the nicknames they would give. And I'm gonna tell you a couple of those and I've never said these on stage before, but we had my one friend, uh, his name was Booger uh, because somebody saw him picking his nose once and then he was Booger until he was like 35. It was crazy. <laughs> and uh, and he, he still skates, I think, or whatever it is, but he was, he was kind of like an idiot savant when it came to nicknames. Like he was, he was not a smart man, but he had the best nicknames. So back in the day, you guys know, skateboarding, you wore giant pants. Like back in the 90s when I was younger, it was giant pants. Like they would go over your shoes, it was giant, right? And then this guy, Keith, he would used to show up and he'd be dressed like us and like, t- like giant pants, like a skater, giant shirt. And then one day, Keith showed up like he was in the Smiths, right? But before, but his name was Keith, and, but his face 
We, my, this guy, Booger, used to call him Boar's Head because he looked like the Boar's Head symbol from the cold cuts <laughs> at the deli. So behind this guy's back, everybody would call him fucking Boar's Head, right? So he's wearing big clothes. He has the boar he, Boar's Head head. And then one day he comes dressed like he's in the Smiths. And my friend Mike says, look, it's Borisy. That's what he said. He said it was Borisy. <laughs> and to me, that's one of the funniest fucking things I've ever heard in my life. I think that's amazing. There's so many similarities between skateboarding and, and stand-up. It's insane. I, it's why I started this show. They're, they're both lone wolf things. Stand-up and skateboarding, lone wolf things. Yeah. There's guys in scenes that they, they, they take the lone wolf thing to the upteenth level. Yeah. If, you're, if you're the guy who's coming out and you're like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm prior the minute I come out, yeah. Then you're fucked. And it's the same thing with skateboarding. There's right. no bluff. Do it, bring yeah. the board, come to the park. It's an open mic, yeah. put your name on the list. Skateboarders know skateboarding, so they have a better sense of it. Yeah. Comics know stand up comedy, so they have a better sense of it. Yeah. So, like, you could be an audience member watching someone arguably do well, and every comic there will hate it. And so the audience member will be like, what, that guy was good, and all the comics go, not really. Yeah, and yeah. And so, skateboarding is the same way. So someone could be like skating into the common person and be like, yeah. oh, that guy's going really fast or whatever, and every skater is like, he's pushing Mongo. Yeah, yeah. He's pushing Mongo <laughs> the whole time. Did nobody else yeah. care about this? That's another parallel. Both have, you have your tricks, which is like the jokes, and then everybody has their own style. I, okay, so I, when I started, I was like, I just want to see if I can do this. I'm going to give myself a the year. The skill, like skating, like, right? Exactly. I just want to land that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and then once a year came around, I was like, well, I'm doing better than I did when I first started. There's so many moments in stand-up where you're like, why? You think back and you tell somebody the story and you go, wait, why did I keep going? <laughs> why, did I, why did I keep going? Why did I keep going up? Oh, that was maybe three years in, and I bombed so bad that one of the guys in the audience was just telling his friend yeah. He just went to his friend, he goes, this guy stinks. <laughs> he wasn't even heckling, he was just tr he was trying to be nice. And the crowd was so quiet that you could hear you him. Could hear, everybody could hear him. <laughs> and I still kept going. And I still kept going. But New York audiences, if you're staying here, you're like, this is a street fight and I'm gonna win you yeah. over. Here. You look very judgmental in your face and I, uh, <laughs> you look like you're here to audit the show. I gotta be honest, I'm not, usually you should have a, a shirt that says I'd rather be reading right now. I'd rather be reading, you look very smart, go fuck yourself and I can't <laughs> stress that more. If you learn nothing else, fuck this guy. And I, I'm kidding, you look great, I'm just kidding, you look great. It, it took me to go on the road to realize that people want you to be there. You know what I mean? Go on the road, like I was at, I mean, like Madison, Wisconsin, and they went and, they, and some lady goes, thank you so much for coming here. And I was like, what are you thanking me for? What are you talking about? Is it, am I being trolled? You're my enemy. What are you talking about? <laughs> but then you, then you start to enjoy it more because you're like, oh my God, you're actually having a good time. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. It's very easy. I think it's don't be a dick. Don't be, don't kiss anybody's ass, but don't be a dick. When <laughs> comics finally started being honest with me, yeah. that's when I knew I was kind of in. Because <laughs> you get a lot of people being like, good set. And you're like, there's no way that's true. No. I'm going to go, I don't tell people good set if it wasn't a good set. I might do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not saying good set. I'm like, at least I can, I'm not contributing to, to shittiness. Um, Lameness in skateboarding, or lameness in stand-up comedy. There's a delusion that happens with a lot of a lot of people. Another comic goes, "Good job, man." I go, "No, it wasn't." And he goes, "Yeah, but that's what comedy is about. It's about bombing." I'm like, "No, it's not. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do here, but you're not there yet." And you're supposed to say, you're like, "Oh, you got to bomb to get better." That's not what you said. You said comedy is about bombing. No, it's not. <laughs> Damn it. Right there. Well, when I went back to Seattle, I was like, oh. I started there when I was. 21. The scene has reset five times since I've been gone, right? Right. I sign up for the open mic, I don't get on, whatever, I leave. I'm not trying to big time anybody. No. Like, hey, I would get comedy for 10 <laughs> years in New York City. No. Do you know Sean Donnelly? Because I do. <laughs> Let me on this open mic. Yeah, but it's so freeing that you don't have to be, you're not involved in it. No. And also, your, how much your perspective has changed. Where you're like going around with the ghosts of past, present, and future watching your path. You're screwed oh, for comedy. You guys, none of this matters. <laughs> it could not matter less. But you don't realize that at the time. Could not matter less. If you can fart on you know, to the mic. No. You can read the phone book. <laughs> Does not matter. I mean, like, no one remembers shit. Yeah. Oh, fuck. There's also people that really get themselves in certain cities, and then they become the king of that city, or they become uh, the king of this one venue in that city. Right? It used to happen at the Creek and the Cable. There'd be guys there, and I would see them other places. I go, and I wouldn't say it because I didn't want to be an asshole, but in my head, I'm like, what are you doing not at the Creek right now? Like, <laughs> Skate park hero? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 same kind of thing, probably. Yeah. The 
work part, it became like if I was just working at a, a Target for me after a while. Uh, so I was doing so much road stuff that I was like, oh, well, uh, it's, I'm grinding out, I'm doing the road stuff. I, I have to do old stuff because on stage because it yeah. has to go well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then once I abandoned that and realized I have to do it for myself more than not just for them. Yeah, it made me enjoy it so much. I'm, I just, yeah. I'm, this is the only place that I can tell these, so I want to. Uh, I'm like, I'm gonna say them. And I, uh, this we used to hang out in parking lots. I think that's. I don't know if that's just a skating thing, but uh, in the '90s, that's where you you wouldn't go. You wouldn't have play dates. You would just go to your parents would be like, go to a parking lot and just play. And uh, we used to go to a Home Depot parking lot in Levittown, uh, New York, and uh, we'd hang out there all the time. And one time, uh, there's a story about this kid that was a skater, and he was on the back of this girl's car, and she didn't realize he was back there, and she was drunk, and she got in her car, and she started driving off, and he fell off the back of her car, and everybody freaked out, and she freaked out, and she put her car in reverse, and she backed over the kid. And then everybody freaked out even more, and she freaked out even more, and she put her car in forward, and she went forward over the kid. And everybody freaked out again, and she fucking loses it, and she went in reverse, and she backed over the kid. And for the rest of that kid's life, his nickname was Speed Bump. It was Speed Bump for the rest of his life. These aren't even my jokes of my act. These are real things that happen because skaters don't give a fuck and comics don't give a fuck, really, is the point that I'm trying to make. And, I, and I, I'm so happy that you guys enjoyed that because I, that's some of the funniest shit, I think. I think there's a thing where skateboarding's on the outside, stand-up comedy's on the outside of things. And we look at like regular, like, Hallmarkish type like society, not to sound too dramatic. Yeah. As like corn, we're like that's corny. This is corny. We're we're being actually for real, and yeah. we might be completely off base. Well, <laughs> late night, the late night set is dying. Doing it doesn't matter as much. Like you know, like at, back in Carson days, you had a perfect late night set. You have a, a year's worth of work booked for you the next day. Uh, yeah. So what you would do at five for, besides the open mic in New York City or whatever, no yeah, mic yeah. somewhere was if you were on Tonight Show, if you were yeah. on Letterman. But now what's happening is they're like, oh, I'll just put a two minute or a minute thing on my Instagram and just the one joke has to be on there. Like it's like just getting shorter yeah. and shorter. People don't give a shit about it a a anymore because they're putting stuff on Instagram, whatever it is. But the art of having that perfectly set up five minutes, I think that's still, a th I still want that to be a thing. Making his Tonight Show debut, please welcome the very funny Sean Donnelly. <laughs> It's so good to be here. I had so many milestones this year. I turned 43, everybody, 43 years old. Yeah. I look 55, but I turned 43, it sucks. And that's why I was so excited to do the show because I think skaters, it's so similar to stand-up. It's like the best people you'll fucking meet because there's a no bullshit thing. With skateboarding, I think every, skateboarders, we know what's corny and what's not fucking corny, and we say it. Thank you so much. Where's my friend Taylor? So-and-so crushes Heckler. And then you then you play the video, and he's just, he's just talking to a guy in the crowd. And then, but there's no, like, crushing the Heckler. Yeah. There's no way this is happening. There's no way. Drive, 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 give her one drive. What? What? Dude, just give us one of these. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I am so old. I am so fucking old. Here we go. Oh, fuck. No, 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 no. No, I don't do the handhold twine, you fucking 28 year old asshole. If I, if, I, if I kept going, I might be able to get it. Hold on. Dude, I'm so... Oh, yes, fuck. John, that's it. You guys are like limping away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, the, you know what? I really do have arthritis in my knees. <laughs> and also, I think it's from skateboarding when I was young. I swear it's just God, coming back to haunt you now. Yeah. Which also from being fat. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I feel like if I was here eight more hours, I could get it. <laughs> All right, I'm not finishing. Dude, that's I'll awesome. See. Enough to not like grind, really. Yeah, 
fuck yeah, back to back. Sick, dude, hell yeah, that was dope. Foot on it. Yeah. Old man. I might come back with my skateboard and try to skate here. Thank you, good to see you, man, see you tonight. Mike. Mike, yeah, I'll see you. Grab the mic. What, oh, the mic. I was like, Mike. Are you like, are you he knows what I just did, he goes, he goes, Mike. I go, all right, Mike. I'm like, you didn't Mike. He meant the fucking Mike. <laughs> Like you do a show that you, like, hey, I'm doing this show I'm really excited to do. And then people would just, like go, you know, you've worked really hard. Like, no, I haven't. <laughs> and then you kind of realize, you're like, oh, well, I have devoted a shitload of time to this. So you're like, yeah, I guess that counts as work, but it's a very selfish I wasn't activity. I was writing the whole decade. <laughs> yeah, like, and people go, oh, it's work, it's work. I'm like, construction is work. You work construction, it yeah, yeah. sucks. That's work. That's work to me. But it is effort. It is effort. And, that's the and, thing. and it's a thing that a lot of people won't do, and there's, there is a, there's a craft to it and all that. But as far as like when I think work, I'm always like, I think of like manual labor work. You know? Of course, yeah. <laughs> Me and my friend Ben were talking about, he's like really successful in marketing. And he was talking about how hard he works and he was like really getting into it. And I got all these hours and everything. And then like two guys carrying like a metal I-beam walk past yeah, him. Yeah. And he goes, I take everything back. <laughs> you feel like you're cheating life if you can get away with just doing this shit.